I like the saddle bronc riding, Tim. I think over the last 10 years in, a, in Australian rodeo, I've witnessed the saddle bronc riding has grown to a new level. And not only the cowboys that have grown to a new level, but also the livestock. I think the first six nights of our rodeo competition in our Federation Rodeo, I think the calibre of horses that we've seen was second to none. And you go a long way in this country to find a better pen of horses that have been brought to us down here at the Sydney Show for 2018. Of course, we've got those phenomenal stock contractors, don't we? The, the Gill Brothers and uh, a few of the others there, and they, they are pulling out all stocks. Oh, they, they Literally serve. all stock. They, they are, <laughs> they are. And it's a big breeding program there. Back, uh, I know the Gill Brothers at Upper Horton, there's a big breeding program there. They've imported a sire from Canada around about four years ago. And you're starting to see his offspring come through the rodeo uh, circuit at this uh, present day. But uh, no, the Saddle Bronc Riding will be certainly a featured event here. And of course, I think it was first seen here at the Sydney Show back in 1942 is when we first seen the Saddle Bronc Riding. And uh, we've got guys out tonight like... Lachlan Miller from Queensland. He's probably one of the hottest young rookie cowboys on the Australian circuit. And in May of this year, he'll uh, make his way over to Canada where he'll try and make a name for himself on the international scene. But he's from Queensland, Jake. He's from Queensland, but he's probably... Well, I, I reckon over the last 10 years, he's probably one of the top young saddle bronc riders that this country's produ produced. He's about six foot two. He's a big, long-legged cowboy, and you'll see him in action tonight. He'll have a real fluent, spurring motion, and he'll be one of the cowboys to watch in our saddle bronc riding. Mate, it is so exciting, of course. Uh, rodeo, it's 45 minutes of jam-packed action. Now, my only concern for you is, is that we've got a Canadian here with a bit of funny paint on his face, and he's a bit of a nuisance, isn't he? He can be. He can be, that's for sure. No, it's, I've never worked with Dennis before, but... I actually just had lunch with him and uh, we had a bit of a yarn and uh, talking about his career. But, you know, he's a phenomenal, phenomenal man and I know he's been up here talking to uh, yourself throughout the week. And he's been seven times Canadian Comedy Clown of the Year. He's worked the biggest rodeo in the world at the NFR, Ringl NFR in Las Vegas. So he's a guy that's got a lot of experience and I'm really looking forward to uh, being in that wonderful spotless stadium tonight working alongside Dennis. Jake Smith thanks for calling up 6.30 tonight if you are here now anywhere in this stadium as the best seats in the house we'd love to see you and Jake uh, good luck with the call tonight we look forward to it. Thanks Tim and look forward to seeing everyone tonight. Perfect, mate. Well, Thank you. Well, bringing you the results now of Class 5, 3, 7, right in front of the Cumberland stand. Our novice pony class over 13, not exceeding 13.2. Congratulations, catalogue number 2329, ACM Ballerina, exhibited here by SJM Equine and Leah Walsh of Inverell. In second place, catalogue 1526, Rabaini Frontman. Congratulations to Diane Jeffrey and Ms Brooks Skinner of East Ch Currajong. In third Third place, catalogue 2144, Brandy Hollow, Pretty Delightful, Janine and Summer Rose nomination at Brandy Hill. In fourth place, catalogue 2277, KT Miss Molly, Karen Townsend's nomination from Box Hill. In fifth place, catalogue 1182, Royal Wood Song Book, Naomi Brinkow of Castle Ray exhibiting here. And in sixth place, catalogue 1053, Mandalay Lord Litchfield, the Anderson and Powell families exhibiting from Oakey. Uh, well, on to the show jumping now. On course, you're watching the young lady from Mudgee in the central west of New South Wales. This is Anna White riding Bodybuilder. All right, so she's against the clock. Got to try and go as quick as she can. Every player gets a prize, so whatever happens, she will get a ribbon. Can she get the blue? So rail down early on. Four jumping penalties, the jump off course. We go 8, 9, 10, 4, A, B, 5, 6, 13. New addition here in the jump off round. Fence number 13, finish over fence number 1. Turns back to the final fence. Great turn to the final fence. Nicely over the last, runs it to the finish line. Four, 
Forty-five seven six. The time taken. Forty-five seven six. One rail down. Four jumping penalties. No time penalties. A total of four. Well, in ring three in front of the big screen, we're watching our working hunter class over 15 hands. You'll see they're jumping a jump as part of this class. Our working hunters need to jump in order for their judge, Shelley Kelly, to adjudicate the best of the working hunters in this class. They're jumping a maximum of 80 centimetres, quite a bit shorter than the show jump in front of us here at the Sydney Royal Stand. Shelley Kelly, well, she actually is quite a show jumper herself, won the Grand Prix here back in uh, 1982 on Dillon. She has been a top producer of show jumpers and horses for many, many, many years. And uh, a lovely lady as well. But right now, we'll turn our attention back to Eva Rasmullen riding at Devil Wears Prada. So if she can jump clear under the time allowed of 64 seconds, she'll automatically take the lead. Rail down, she needs to be quicker than 45.76. She's not mucking around here. Rolls back to the combination. Oh, makes uh, Devil's Wears Prada work out of there. There'll be some fingernails being chewed down here by the cheer squad. Nicely through the combination of five up to six. Rolls back to the new fence. Fence number 13. Two fences left to go. All clear at this stage. Come on, Eva. Devil wears Prada. She's going to take the inside line. She's going to make us work for it. Here she goes. Safely on the last. Clear round. New leader in the competition. 45-6-6 the time taken. 45-6-6 and all clear. For Eva Rasmullen and Devil Wears Prada. Well, there's an extraordinarily large class that's just joined us now in front of the members stand in ring two. This is class 507, the Colonel A.V. Pope Silver Perpetual Trophy. And uh, this is for the best gelding hack over 15 hands, showing thoroughbred qualities. Look at that, Lindsay Douglas, all down the side in front of all of the members and the Sutter stand. What a beautiful display of... Excellent horse flesh out there. Absolutely, Tim. And this, uh, this has been presented every year since 1950. So it's one of the most famed. I see you've been here for every one. I have, I have. No, it's one of the most famed um, trophies awarded in the horse section of the Sydney Royal Easter Show. Well, next out into our show jumping arena, we welcome the young gun, Jane Wilcox. And she's riding Miss Pippa. Miss Pippa has been a very successful eventing horse as well as that show jumper. Now our judge from Singapore, although Jane is beautifully presented with her horse plaited and her gear looking immaculate, isn't being judged on presentation. Just on whether she jumps the fence cleanly or whether she knocks it down. This is our third last competitor to go. Time to beat, 45-6-6. Eva's gonna, it's going to take some beating for Eva to uh, fall from the uh, number one spot. Jane comes round, two fences left to go. Eva has already finished on her round, so you can see just how much quicker Eva Rasmullen was on Devil Wears Prada. Jane gets a nice inside turn to the final fence, trying to keep the pressure on the last two riders. She'll go into second place. That's a lovely clear round. 57.99, 57.99, all clear, currently into second place. Hi. Hey, Tim, the uh, Alpacas oh, right. joined us at Sydney Royal Easter Show. They all bumped in last night. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you think, Easy oh, I've never right. seen an alpaca before, I want to know more about how alpacas are used in Australia as part of agriculture, you can visit them on site here. They're becoming very popular in agricultural elements of schools programs these days. I was chatting to uh, Janie Forrest before, a counsellor who's heavily involved in the world of alpacas, and she was saying they're the perfect addition to a school's agricultural program because they're not quite the maintenance of, uh, of cattle. Uh, they've got some of the similar qualities to sheep. And uh, they're just a really interesting part and, and a flourishing part 
of bespoke agriculture in Australia. So the alpacas are here. They're absolutely gorgeous. We're going to have them, I think, as part of our grand parade later on today too. But make sure you swing by and, uh, and visit the alpacas who have just arrived on show. Well, our rider on course at the moment from now on the south coast of uh, New South Wales. It is the lovely young Mia Guppy Hall, Positino. Two fences left to go, all clear at this stage. What a remarkable comeback, this young lady. They didn't complete the first uh, competition for our young... Uh, Look at that turn to the final fence. Great ride. Uh, safely over the last. 54.36. 54.36. She'll go into second place. 54.36. Well done to uh, Mia. So three clear rounds. Anna White sitting in fourth. Final rider out into the arena. We welcome out now Taylor Robinson. And along came Wednesday. So if you've just joined us here in Spotless Stadium, you'll see that uh, we have four rings of activity at the moment and one very, very large class here in front of the members' stand. That is a rather prestigious trophy that's being judged at the moment. It's the Colonel A.V. Pope Silver Cup Perpetual Trophy. It's awarded for the best gelding hack over 15 hands in which the opinion of the judge shows thoroughbred qualities. And we have two fantastic judges down there uh, for this class. Um, one is the lovely Lizzie Jelfs, who you'll recognise her voice. I interviewed her a moment ago uh, from Sky TV, Sky Racing. Well, we're just finishing our round and congratulations to uh, Taylor Robinson and along came Wednesday, safely over the last 68.93, 68.93. Four jumping, five time, a total of nine and into fifth place, but well done to our winner. Eva Rasmussen and uh, Devil Wears Prada will take the win. Lindsay, I'm going to go down for this presentation and talk to our amateur riders in this class, proudly sponsored by Jumping New South Wales and Horsepower. And we will have uh, Mr Stephen Lamb down there for the presentation. Well, as I mentioned yep. before, our uh, Colonel A.V. Pope Cup is being judged by two judges. You can see them in the middle of the arena there. Lovely ladies, both with a dash of red. And uh, and in the red skirt, you can see Lizzie Jelfs. Uh, she's from Sky Racing. She spent 15 years working with uh, Lindsay Park Racing, David Hayes in Melbourne. She did uh, a couple of years with Racing.com as a mounting yard analyst. Now you'll see her on TV. She's uh, in the mounting yards assessing horses, uh, seeing how they're parading, giving feedback to the very many viewers who are racing enthusiasts on Sky Racing and uh, she's exceptionally well placed to be our judge here seeking thoroughbred qualities in our gelding hacks. And she is joined by Mrs Helen Page who uh, has won just about every major trophy and cup that you can win uh, in the hack sections of Sydney Roll. She's won uh, Champion Hack, we believe. She's won the Pope Cup on Moliere. Uh, she's won three times over the P.S. Wills Allen Memorial Cup Perpetual Trophy for Champion Lady Rider. Uh, for six years, she won uh, the Ida Burring Rheingold Perpetual Prize consecutively. Comes from a family of show jumpers. And uh, they are our judges 
for the Colonel A.V. Pope Cup. It's known colloquially around here as just the Pope Cup and that'll be presented at the end of this class. You'll also see our working hunters there at Ring 3, Class 610, being judged by Shelley Kelly. You'll see they have some jumps there too, so they're required to demonstrate to their judge that they can in fact jump. So in working, in working hunter classes, you'll notice that each of our competitors is wearing tweed. Now, some are wearing a brown tweed, some are wearing a navy tweed, but that must be worn as a mark of respect for the heritage of the working hunter and, uh, and their purpose, which was, of course, for hunting, as per their name. You'll notice that unlike a lot of the hat classes, there's no um, sparkly or blingy gear. So their tack is plainer, uh, no flashy girths. They've got nice matching saddles and bridles. And that is, again... Um, a nod to the heritage of the working hunter. Uh, the horses you'll notice are, are not as fine perhaps as our hacks. They're a little more heavily boned. They're not too wide, they still need great confirmation um, but they need to be able to cover the ground like they're going hunting and they don't need to be perfect and pretty uh, like a lot of our hack horses. They need to be um, beautiful but equally they need to be able to go all day. So if you look over uh, to our hacks, class 507, where they're judging the Pope Cup. These are our hacks. These are our beautiful supermodel horses, our show horses. And uh, these were the horses back in the day that the landed gentry would ride to get to the hunt. And then once they arrived at the hunt, well, they'd jump off their hack and onto their working hunter and they'd head off hunting for the day. So they're being judged here by Shelley Kelly. She too has a long and illustrious career here at Sydney Royal East. A show won the Grand Prix in show jumping 1982. I was the stunt coordinator here for the night show uh, with the equestrian show Gemma Spirit of the Outback. Um, her mother, Pearl Batchelor, set up riding for the disabled here in New South Wales. Her father-in-law, Colin Kelly, was uh, the owner of a number of Grand Prix horses and was also a green coat here. Her husband was a green coat here, has also won a Grand Prix, and their son today, well, he is a steward of nearly 10 years in the show jumping section. And uh, over towards the far side of Spotless Stadium in front of the Cumberland Stand, currently judging class, I think it's 539. 539 is being judged at the moment. That'll be our novice pony class. Um, it must be 535. A novice pony class uh, is being judged at the moment. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we cast our attention down here for the presentation of the class number 921, the amateur show jumping competition. And congratulations to the winner, Eva Rasmullen riding Devil Wears Prada. Second place, uh, what a comeback it's been, Mia Guppy Hall and Positino in second place. Third place going to Jane Wilcox and Miss Pippa. Fourth place going to Anna White and Bodybuilder. And fifth place, congratulations to Taylor Robinson. And along came Wednesday. Well done to our horses and riders. And we have Mr. Stephen Lamb, uh, Head of Marketing and Sales at Horsepower Australia, the Australia Premier Feed Company, who have sponsored the amateur show jumping in conjunction with Jumping New South Wales. Down here congratulating our riders. So well done to uh, Stephen Lamb. Of course, Stephen's daughter is here in our night show each and every night. So Stephen been around a lot. But uh, Eva, what a great crowd it's been to come and show jump in front of, hey? Yes, thank you very much. I want to say a massive thank you to all the organisers and the judges and all the course designers and the other people in the class as well. Um, everyone's worked so hard to get here and it's a, it's a lot of luck on the, on the final placings. And um, massive thank you to my horse. I am one of the most privileged people to have such an awesome pony. And um, the biggest thank you to um, the best coach and friend I could ask for, um, James Mooney, for all his hard work in getting here. I wouldn't be here without him. And and, um, and all the team back at Kalaroo that always keep the place running when I'm running off trying to do this crazy dream of jumping show jumps. 
Well, congratulations. You've got an awesome crew up there in the crowd as well. I want your cheer squad when I go and do something. Runner-up in this competition. Congratulations, uh, Mia. Super round here to come out second place. How pleased are you right now? Oh, I'm just ecstatic. This is my first ever uh, uh, show jumping event at the Easter show. Uh, and he's just come up so far from the first round that we did this morning. I'd just like to thank my parents for bringing me here, my coach, Simon Kale, who's just been so great in my preparation. And of course, all the sponsors and everyone here at Sydney Royal. It's just been such a dream. Well, congratulations. And uh, Stephen Lamb now making the presentation of uh, the trophy rug here. And uh, we do thank uh, Stephen for his uh, sponsorship and uh, while the uh, judging continues on, Stephen, thank you so much for your sponsorship. It's uh, wonderful to have a company like Horsepower come in and uh, support it here. Great to see our amateurs jumping so well. Yeah, we love supporting the amateurs here at Sydney um, in conjunction with Jumping New South Wales. It's been a, a great initiative over, what, five or six years now? And um, it's just great. To, they, everyone really enjoys it. Even the crowd was right into it. So we'd love to be involved. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to our sponsors and, of course, uh, Jumping New South Wales there as well. Well done to our winner, Eva Rasmussen, riding Devils. Where's Prada? Well, we'll send them on a lap around the arena as they come around. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for our winner and place getters of our show jumping here today. What a great class. And well done to all of our amateur riders.
Well, bringing you the results now of class five, three, five. Novice Pony not exceeding 12 hands in front of the Cumberland stand. Congratulations, catalogue 1515, Yartala Park Mercedes. That is Courtney Gibson's exhibit from Oakville. In second place, catalogue number 1498, Warrenora Trickery. Congratulations to Kerry Fury, who's travelled all the way from Brookfield in Queensland. And in third place, catalogue 1803, it's Karen Malabar's nomination of Amden Lodge Sir Prize, all the way from Monbolk in Victoria. Oh, congratulations to our winner, Yartala Park Mercedes, a uh, pony by Oak Vale Serenade and out of Drum Climb Mosaic, exhibited here by Courtney Gibson. Well, I can see our working hunters lining up now for the presentation of Class 610, our working hunter over 15 hands. They had to jump jumps there, a series of jumps, maximum of 80 centimetres, and uh, a couple of them came a cropper. But that is part of the working hunter class. They must demonstrate an ability to jump. And we have the results through now. Class 610, Working Hunter over 15 hands, judged by Ms Shelley Kelly. Congratulations, Catalogue 1519, Beyond Reasonable Doubt. And certainly it was considered Beyond Reasonable Doubt, the winner today of our Working Hunter over 15 hand class, exhibited here by Melissa Gillies of Sydney. In second place, Catalogue 1941, NV Hudson. It's Laura Northover's exhibit from Ebenezer. In third place, Catalogue 16. Three nine Stony Creek with uh, Charlotte Jacobson of Forbes. In fourth place, catalogue 2131, it's Hannah Rothwell's nomination of Maine's Matilda. And in fifth place, catalogue 1463, Mr. Positive and Jessica Fedrick of Gatton in Queensland.
Oh, well, if you've just joined us here in the Spotless Stadium, we're currently watching the judging of the Colonel A.V. Pope Silver Perpetual Trophy. It's donated by the late Colonel A.V. Pope for the best gelding hack over 15 hands, which in the opinion of the judge shows thoroughbred qualities. I hope you're enjoying the shade there, ladies and gentlemen. I know it's uh, quite warm outside. But it's not deterring Sydney Siders from attending the Sydney Royal Easter Show today. I've just had word that already 99,000 people have passed through the gates here at Sydney Olympic Park. So that's pretty extraordinary and a warm day like today. But Good Friday is traditionally a very popular day here for the Sydney Royal Easter Show. Great day to get the whole family out see the animals, watch the great night show that we have for you this evening, get some show bags, jump on some rides and have a really memorable day together. Well, uh, shout out to our live streaming viewers right now of the Colonel A.V. Pope Cup. We've got a large number of viewers all around the world watching this class. It is one of the most significant classes as part of the Sydney Royal Horse Show and one that is eagerly watched by all hack enthusiasts. It's awarded for the best gelding hack over 15 hands donated by the late Colonel A.V. Pope and first presented back in 1950. The first ever winner was Metaxas and uh, it was presented originally for hacks uh, that uh, were slightly smaller until it was changed over to 15.2 hands. And until 2016, it was awarded to the best hack over 15 hands, showing thoroughbred quality. So the aim in doing so, in starting up this perpetual trophy, was to promote a better class of horse in the show ring. And it certainly attracts quite a number of exhibits every year. You saw the number uh, who had come out here earlier. There were 65 in the class originally. And now we're down to the last, I think it's 10 or 12 out there. Recent uh, exhibitors that have been successful here have been Romsey Park and Terry Van Heysen, Mrs Edwina Cullen. Prior to that, Miss Stephanie Barrington. Joanne Maunder in 2015 with Kakadu. Dale Plum with DP Amazing back in 2014. 
Alex Berwick and Sarah McMaster with Accelerate in 2013. So welcome to our live stream viewers. We hope you are enjoying the footage. And at the end of this class, we will bring you the presentation and the recipient of this year's Colonel A.V. Pope Silver Perpetual Trophy. Well, joining us now in front of the Cumberland stand are competitors in our next Novice Pony class. Over 12 and not exceeding 12.2, it's being judged by Miss Julie Butler from Camden, been judging for over 30 years. First started competing here at the tender age of just 10 years old, riding at a very young age, and today takes retired racehorses and turns them into fabulous show horses.
Well, if you have just joined us here this afternoon, of course, coming up a little bit later on this afternoon, we will have a, a feast for the senses. At 4.25, we will have the Grand Parade, a show favourite and an iconic spectacular, including this afternoon, Lindsay Douglas, the champions of the Royal Agricultural Society of New South Wales. This is a newer initiative, isn't it, for the, the RAS? It is, and it's an initiative that celebrates those individuals in each section of the show who have made an extraordinary contribution to that particular division. And if you think about the number of exhibitors and contrib contributors we have to each section, there's 52,000 exhibits. How many? 52,000 exhibits. Oh, my goodness. In the Sydney Royal Easter Show. And uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of competitions. So there's a handful of people that have been recognised in each of their divisions, whether it's in the alpaca section, cattle, dairy, fine food. We met with uh, Julianne Lever today, who's an exceptional pâté maker. Uh, whether it's from the goat section, horse, uh, horticulture, the uh, poultry and pigeon, sheep and wool, veterinary, uh, wine, one of my favourite sections, the wood chop, uh, or the youth affairs division of the show. There's one person each year that the Royal Agricultural Society identifies from each of those sections and it's, it's just going to be wonderful to have them in the Grand Parade and we'll get to talk a little about each of them then. We saw Will. It's always wonderful to uh, have the uh, Grand Parade and bring all of those uh, exhibits in, 52,000 exhibits. Not all of them are going to be here in the arena. That would be a little bit of an overkill. But, uh, of course, the show has been running since 1822. And uh, did you know that when the show first started, it actually didn't run over Easter? It was held in October. Was it called the Royal October Show? It was just called uh, the very first Easter show was held here in 1823, but it was just called the Parramatta Fair. Ah. And it was held just out the road here. And, and we haven't always been here, have we, Tim? No, because, of course, for many years, for a lot of people, they would remember being at Moore Park over there near the Sydney Cricket Ground. And, in fact, if you go over there, you can still see the original council stand and uh, what was Fox Studios that has just been uh, repurchased. There is still the uh, government pavilions and some of the other pavilions there as well. And the clock tower at the back of the members' stand is still there as well. Well, if you've just joined us here in the Spotless Stadium, we have two of our very exciting classes here a small class and a big class, if you look at it very simply. The small class, our lovely novice ponies over in front of the Cumberland stand. This is a class for ponies, 12 hands and not exceeding 12.2. It's being judged by Ms Julie Butler. And following that, we will have our best novice pony hack judging. So that'll be the best of the best, the winners from earlier in the day. And here in front of the member stand... We're watching the Colonel A.V. Pope Cup. Which is, is being streamed uh, around the, the country and around the world. So those watching online, let me tell you, you are missing out because uh, the best place to be here is at the Sydney Royal Easter Show. In the shade. In the shade, yeah. There's plenty <laughs> of shade. If people are looking for shade, there is still plenty of shade to go up into the top of the Sinclair or the Vincent and Fairfax stands. Um, there is still a few seats around here in the uh, lower promenade of the Sydney Royal Stand. And, of course, those with members' passes uh, can go into the members' stand. Hey, Lindsay, have you got a show bag this year? Uh, I haven't had a chance to go in, actually. I do need to go. Well, did you know that the first of these show bags here at the Sydney Royal Easter Show were first seen around 1900 when it was noticed that businesses were giving away stands or sample bags, even if they weren't deemed to be very useful. And it was just after that that we started to have them labelled as bags and being sold. If you go up to Brisbane, Ecker, which is at 135 shows now, that um, first ever show bag up there, when they first started, was a free bag of coal for every competitor, for mm. every person coming through the gate. How wonderful. Well, Bit of energy. Yeah. Yeah, well, that was that was right. Well, that's how they got warmth. And of course, the Brisbane Ecker is in whiz winter time. So, uh, well, I'll tell you, during the, um, during the Depression, yes. there was a show bag, or as a, sa a sample bag, as you called them um, back in the day, that was called the Pick Me Up. The pick-me-up. The pick-me-up because they were in the Depression and the sample bag cost sixpence 
and you got uh, some bottles of kids. Don't get jealous. This these were the good days. You yes. got a couple of bottles of tomato sauce. Yes. Some black sauce. Yes. Some mini tins of baked beans and some oh. tins of spaghetti. That would just be, uh, I'd be set for a month. Can you, there, there must be boys and girls here now with handbags in their hands saying, what? That's what I wanted. <laughs> I, my favourite show bag, though, I think would have to be the Birdie Beetle. Do you know how the Birdie Beetle bag came about? No, but God, it's an institution, isn't it? Do you know, it is made from the offcuts of the Violet Crumble. Do you know the Violet Crumble? Yes, right. Here's the Birdie Beetle bag. And we've actually got one up here in the broadcast box. So if you look at the Birdie Beetle, they can't be bought anywhere else other than in a show bag. And they have the exact same ingredients as a Violet Crumble. Yes, right. It's always good value for money, isn't it? Yeah, yeah I, think it, I think it would have to be uh, my, one of my favourites. I'll tell you what, uh, Fairy Floss is another institution here, isn't it? It first appeared at the Sydney Royal in the 1920s and it was such a great success, as you'd expect. And there was a write-up in the 1928 Sydney Morning Herald that uh, decried all the terrible little boys sticky with their ice cream and Fairy Floss and oranges who treacherously wiped their hands on their coattails in the crowd. It was a... uh, Bit of an annoyance to parents, that uh, fairy floss. I, do you know I've never been a fan of fairy floss? <gasps> Delicious. Really? Oh, of course. And you know the other thing I can't go to? It's a dagwood dog. Oh! But she's on a out. stick. Look out every year. <laughs> I have one a day for 12 days here at the show. Hey, um, you know the Sydney Royal Easter show is all about growing big things? Mm. And the biggest pumpkin ever entered for competition at the Sydney Royal Easter show weighed... 728 kilograms. It was entered in the 2015 Great Backyard Pumpkin Challenge and following the show, the pumpkin was delivered to Taronga Zoo as a special treat for all the elephants who devoured the pumpkin like hungry kids in a candy store. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Speaking of things that weigh about 700 kilos... We're, uh, Why did you look at me after no. eating all those cheese on his sticks? <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean uh, our horses out here oh, yes. in the main arena. We're, uh, we're watching a very prestigious cup and uh, shortly we'll be awarding the Pope Cup. So this is a show horse class, Lindsay, and there'll be lots of people sitting out there thinking, what a beautiful exhibit. And uh, if we have a look on the big screen, you can see the extra eye for detail that our competitors have gone to here today. In a show horse competition, you can see that a magnificent brow band on the bridle or the thing that goes uh, across the forehead of the horse. And uh, you'll see that that mane is all plaited. It's braided. And plaited. And in fact, do you know they actually sew those plaits up so they don't just band them up so you get a little ball. They actually get cotton and thread and they loop them through and they sew them in to be a really nice plait. You'll also notice that the tail is at the perfect length and uh, sometimes they have false tails. But don't tell anyone. They have false tails on some of them. So if the horse doesn't have a really full tail, because it's a thoroughbred and thoroughbreds tend to flick their tail a lot then you'll actually go and you'll get a fake tail, like a bit of a wig, and you'll plait it in underneath where no one can see, and you'll add it so that when you go out, that tail is really full and really got a lot of, like, volume to it. Because if, it, if the standard non-horsey person is watching now, either on the live stream or here in the spotless stadium, you may well look out and say, well... How on earth do you tell the difference between these horses? But it's all about catching the judge's eye, isn't it? Well, what did they say the judge the other day? First impressions count. Yes, if you can't see it, it wasn't there. And uh, what was the last one? He did have something else. Oh, something about leave it out. If in doubt, leave it out. If in doubt, leave it out. <laughs> now, if we look at this horse now working out and we look at that uh, the rump of that horse, you can see the patterns on the horse's rump. That's obviously not natural, those patterns. That's actually put there to try and enhance the feature. So in a show horse competition, we're trying to show off all the features of our horse. So we want it to have that really full tail. We want to have that lovely neckline. That's why we plait the mane up. We also want to show its his rump is uh, really nice and strong because, of course, if we go back in time with our horses, then uh, we are saying that that uh, horse needs to be so it's got the power from a thoroughbred competition to be able to run with the power of a thoroughbred. And so our show horse competitors are uh, showing out the, uh, the power there. Now, did you know that these horses out here today, Lindsay, also wear makeup? 
Not a bit the, of foundation, some Chanel. Well, close to that, you'll find around the eyes, they'll put a little bit of black makeup to accentuate the eyes. You'll see the legs if they're a bay horse like this horse is, where he's got that lovely rich colour and then the black marking, so the black tail and the black legs. They'll actually make that with a little bit of raven's oil just to bring out the shine. And you'll see he has one white sock on the back foot. Well, there, they might even get some chalk just to bring out the white and really harness that colour because, as we said before, that first impression to grab the uh, judge's attention. And in show horse, it's all about the one percenters. Those one percent difference is all it takes, particularly at the Sydney Royal Easter Show. And we saw at the start of the, uh, the Pope Cup that they were lined up from the judge's hut all the way around to where our trapeze artists are. There was a huge number of horses. So just to get an opportunity to work out is that no mean feat in itself. And it's so fascinating to think that competitors don't just travel from near and far in New South Wales. We've had winners from Geelong, uh, from far up in Queensland. We had uh, an exhibitor here from the Northern Territory as a place getter in one of our classes recently. South Australia, we've a number of hat competitors uh, that have travelled to Sydney Royal from there. Yeah, and sure. it is oh, such a have, prestigious yeah. show that we have Perfect. competitors. Easy. So we'll do them. Yes. travel from all yes. over the nation yes. in order to take home a supreme champion, a champion, or an important recognition like the Colonel A.V. Pope Cup. Well, if you cast your eyes to the Cumberland stand, we're about to make the presentation of class 536, novice pony over 12 and not exceeding 12.2. Congratulations, catalogue 2394, Lindhurst Buttons and Bows, a fabulous name exhibited here by Sarah Young of Moree. In second place, catalogue 2382, Zoe Wilson's nomination of Hamlet Park Holy Silk brought from uh, Nichols Point in Victoria. In third place, catalogue 1994, Tiona Cossett, Joanne Parry's nomination from Lake Haven. In fourth place, catalogue 1739, Brayburn Heavenly Soprano and Kate Kiros, the owner there. In fifth place, catalogue 1464, Canally Wood Kensington. Congratulations to R. Frederick and Mrs. C. Frederick from Gatton, Queensland. And in sixth place, catalogue 1554, Ryle Finale. Congratulations, Timothy Hadlow of Coonawarra. Well, our winner of the Novice Pony class over 12 and not exceeding 12.2, Lindhurst Buttons and Bows. Well, that uh, novice pony class, Tim, is just another example of how far people have travelled. They've gone to ag shows all over their own state to accumulate the points. Perhaps they've even travelled interstate. Uh, they are eligible upon many, many wins to come to Sydney Royal. So, yeah, you need seven agricultural wins at agricultural events like Camden Show or you might be up at Bow Desert or you might be down at uh, Whittlesea in Victoria. And uh, once you've achieved that level over a period of time, you may get uh, the opportunity to come to Sydney Royal. And people in this last class have come from as far away as Moree. What would that be, eight hours? Oh, at least. Eight hours. Uh, Nichols Point in Victoria, Lake Haven in New South Wales, Menindee in South Australia. They've really Menindee travelled. Lakes, yeah. Mm. Lovely to see them. Gatton we've, in Queensland. We've got competitors from Western Australia here. And we also have from the Northern Territory. 
and uh, every other state as well as Tasmania here competing this year. Did did you hear about uh, Did you hear about Jeffrey, Tim? I think so. Do you know my friend Jeffrey? I might have moved it. Your friend Jeffrey? Mm, my friend Jeffrey. He travelled from uh, Western Australia. Fifty six hours. Jeffrey travelled to the show. Yeah, I know. Isn't that amazing? With cattle. He did, and Jeffrey's a pig. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he's unbelievable. So Jeffrey the pig, and he's an animal pig. He's not just a messy eater. No. <laughs> I'm not just insulting one of my friends. He is uh, Jeffrey the pig, who uh, he's the Berkshire pig, and he legitimately travelled 56 hours to be up against 120 animals here for the honour of best pig in show. And as you said, he bunked in with a herd of cattle, made his way over here, and uh, he's been quite a hit at this year's Sydney Royal Easter Show. Well, Lindsay, an interesting uh, scenario here. There's lots of uh, saddles on the ground. I, I don't quite understand what's happened, Tim. They've derobed. They have. Well, uh, in this competition, derobed. I like that. In uh, this competition, in the Colonel A.V. Pope Silver Perpetual Trophy, is uh, being presented down here or being judged. And so our judges have judged all these horses under saddle. They did this in the Crane Trophy as well. And... Without being the judge, I believe my opinion would be that it's a thoroughbred class. And so whenever you're looking at thoroughbreds 
from a purchase point of view, you always look at them without the saddle on because you want to be able to take in the entire picture from head to tail, from tip to toe, and everything in between. So we have lead classes quite often. In all of our competitions here, we have a lot of lead classes. And so the, uh, the judge wants to have a look at this horse. And you'll see these riders that are now handlers, and you'll see the little tricks they're doing. They're getting that horse to stand up. And uh, if we look at the uh, one currently standing second with that young lady, she's got its feet perfectly positioned. And uh, she has, uh, getting it just to prick its ears, she's playing with its nose. And that's because, of course, you want the overall impression to be, to be there and to be spot on. And by getting it to just stretch like that and stand up with its ears nice and pricked as our first place getter at the moment, or the one at the front is standing there, doing the same thing. In fact, they're all now doing it because they know the judges are looking. So they want these horses to give you that overall impression. If the horse has its ears pricked, always looks a lot nicer than when its ears are back. And you can see now that our stewards have had the nod from their judges and uh, James Bell there from New England region and the other stewards are coming over. They've got the, cl uh, the clipboards and the iPads. Their job is to take down the uh, judge's final word and they will put those numbers into the iPad, they go off to ring control for verification. Via the cloud, something via, like that. Via the mysterious internet. And, uh, how, and how when does it's, this thing called the internet work? I don't know. <laughs> and then once it is all fully approved and signed off and checked, as you would expect of a royal show, it is then issued through to us and we get to tell the crowd. We do. So uh, the, uh, the countdown is on now, so we're certainly getting very close and we look forward to bringing you the results for this competition. And, of course, uh, we do have...
Well, while we wait for this result to come in here to centre stage over on the far side of the arena, in the, the beautiful afternoon sun, we have special class number 540 being judged here. And this is the best novice pony hack under 14 hands in front of uh, Miss Julie Butler. And so each of these comp combinations has won their novice class in their height division. And they now are invited out for the best novice show hunter. Well, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, the runner-up in class number 507, the Colonel A.V. Pope, best gelding hack over 15 hands, which in the opinion of the judge shows thoroughbred qualities. Please put your hands together for catalogue number 1521, Stephen Gladstone from here in Sydney with the beautiful Heartbreaker. What an amazing start to a day they have had here today. That beautiful uh, thoroughbred out of space time, the French mare by Bertolini, the USA stallion, uh, this beautiful thoroughbred heartbreaker. And Stephen Gladstone from Des Moines here in New South Wales is the 2018 runner-up of uh, 507, the Colonel A.V. Pope, best gelding over 15 hands. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, at the uh, catalogue, uh, the winner is going to catalogue number 2301 Universal Stables and Sienna V. Athelopoulos from Ganabra in Queensland with the beautiful base. What an amazing horse, out of, sired by the sensational thoroughbred sire of many champions, Zabil. And uh, congratulations out of a tall story. And uh, the magnificent base wins here today. And Lindsay Douglas is down there with our winner. Well, Ray Stanley's on board at the moment and uh, he's going to be busy for a second or two. Getting the beautiful blue first place ribbon put on. This is a Zabil gelding and just looking magnificent here. Reese, I might get you to tell me a bit about the owners and connections of base. I'll give him a second actually. I think we've got a bit of time before we <laughs> get this all done up. St Stephen Gladstone, heartbreaker. You must be... <laughs> he said, no, I don't break anyone's heart. Don't look at me. Uh, I know, look, I'm not calling you the heartbreaker, Stephen. Tell us a bit about this gelding. Um, he, he was bred in Ireland. He raced in Ireland. He won in Ireland, England and Australia. And um, I saw him at the races one day and I just said, I, I need this horse, right? Anyway, but the other thing I need to do anyway is thank all the people that helped me, all the behind-the-scenes things, such as Biv and Angie and uh, uh, Emma, right? Because without all them, I couldn't get out here to do this, right? You won two classes already here today, best thoroughbred exhibit, and you won the, I think, the four-year-old class as well. And, uh, and I'm curious to hear from you, what has your journey to Sydney Royal been? A lot of hard work and a lot of money. 
It's massive. But it's a great thrill to get here, don't worry. Wonderful. Thank you so much and congratulations. We'll make our way over and uh, when the photographs are taken of gorgeous bass. Tell us a bit about this magnificent trophy, Tim. Well, it's the beautiful electroplated silver twin-handled uh, urn that we see here, donated by the late Colonel A.V. Pope and first presented in 1950. And, uh, and he awarded to the best gelding over 15 hands, which is, in the opinion, shows uh, magnificent thoroughbred qualities. And uh, congratulations, it was uh, first, oh, sorry, it has been won by many, many top exhibits here today and uh, we can see there the beautiful garland proudly donated by Kim Durant and uh, the winner also receives the uh, prize thanks to Oakwood Products Australia for all of their magnificent uh, results for this and also the garland proudly sponsored by Conce Connect Conception Garlands and we have Mr David Calbert with that there as well for that beautiful garland and uh, what a magnificent garland it is and also Kim Durante down here but Lindsay after all the accolades are we now finally down there with Reese? Well I'm with Reese Stanley the jockey on board today uh, base a Zabil gelding and just magnificent here if I can get close I'll hand over the mic to hear a little about base's journey to Sydney Royal. I don't think that's going to happen today either, Reese. but thank you anyway. This has been a wonderful class to watch today and uh, what a beautiful trophy, so much heritage. First presented here in 1950 and in 2018, our winner, the gorgeous gelding there, Base. Well, well done once again to Universal Stables and all the connections, uh, Sienna Vassilopoulos and uh, that beautiful horse. Well, as they make their way out of the arena... Please put your hands together. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, we love celebrating history. A cast that has been presented since 1950 has been won by some phenomenal names over the uh, period of time. And uh, what a superb effort here today. And of course, we talked about this earlier, our judge, Mrs. Helen Page. She was Mrs. Helen Crowley at this stage in 1976.